syphilis is the topic uh, for this video. And syphilis is um, caused by a organism known as tryponema. Uh, tryponema pallidum is the full name. And this is a spirochete. And this can be transmitted um, by sexual contact. So there's two mechanisms really. The first one is sexual contact, so it technically is a sec an STD, sexually transmitted disease. But there's another way, and that's tr from uh, mother, mother to um, baby, transplacentally. So those are the two uh, modes of um, that you can transmit it. Now, syphilis, interestingly, has three different stages. There's primary, there's secondary, and there's tertiary. And each of these stages has uh, specific uh, signs and symptoms. And I wanted to uh, just briefly touch on them without getting uh, everybody too confused. The primary stage is, the, of course, the initial stage. And the most characteristic finding is a canker. And the canker uh, essentially will uh, present as a painless ulcer. And it can occur anywhere. But the most common places in a man is uh, the penis, uh, in a woman is the vulva, and in both uh, uh, genders can be uh, the lips or the mouth. And it's very characteristic in, uh, in its appearance. The secondary stage has quite a lot of uh, symptoms that are nonspecific like fever and um, nausea and fatigue. But the more specific one is the rash that develops in particular on the palms and I encourage you to um, look this up just type um, into an internet search secondary syphilis rash and you'll get this characteristic rash and one thing that I really wanted to point out about this rash is that on everybody's hand you have these hand lines but what's characteristic about the syphilis rash is that the the um, lesions actually cross the hand lines and that's actually very specific for secondary syphilis so I encourage you to look that up so you can get a clearer picture of what I'm referring to. The third stage which is tertiary syphilis only happens if syphilis was not treated. If syphilis was treated it never progresses to this. If it does progress to this that essentially means that the person has not been treated for years because it takes a long time for tertiary syphilis to develop. And if it does develop, you have unfortunate uh, CNS involvement, central nervous system. And then there's one um, aspect of tertiary syphilis that I really wanted to touch on, and that's something called tabes dorsalis. And um, tabes dorsalis is a rather tragic and unfortunate complication that can occur in uh, tertiary syphilis. And that is that you have the slow progressive degeneration of the nerves and that can lead to tremendous pain in the legs and it can also lead to gait ataxia where the person is not able to walk properly and there's several other sensation uh, related uh, abnormalities as well so if that happens it's actually pretty pretty severe pretty tragic so how do you diagnose this Syphilis, interestingly, has a long list of uh, diagnostic tests, and what uh, always struck me about syphilis is how the tests, they're all abbreviations, and each of these abbreviations stands for something uh, very, very long. And uh, I'll, I'll, of course, tell you what each of these are. RPR, essentially, is rapid plasma reagent. That's the test. That's the first test. VDRL is Venereal Disease Research Lab. That's actually the name of the test. And these are the blood tests um, that are done most commonly. Then the next two are a little bit more uh, specific. They're actually testing antibodies. The first one is Fluorescent Triponemal Antibody Absorption. That's what it stands for. And the next one is microhemagglutination assay for antibodies to tryponema pallidum. Good news is on licensing exams it will actually give you the abbreviation so 
you don't necessarily have to memorize what it stands for, but if you can learn what it stands for, that's great. So let's uh, jump to the treatment. Well, the treatment is penicillin, and in particular the type of penicillin known as benzathine penicillin. And it's given as an IM shot, an IM injection, and um, that is essentially penicillin G. So if you really want to get specific. Now, before I jump to the clinical vignettes, there's one uh, um, very important um, reaction that can happen if someone with syphilis is treated with that penicillin. And it's called, big long name here, Jerich's Herxheimer reaction, or GHR, however you want to pronounce it. Now, what happens is, uh, this is basically, uh, let's say, 6 to 12 hours after uh, someone is given penicillin for treatment of syphilis, they'll develop some rather unfortunate uh, symptoms such as malaise, fever, headache, sweating, etc. Now the good news is that it usually goes away in about uh, 24 hours or so. If you really want to help the person, you can just give some antipyretics such as aspirin. So that's important. That that I've seen that tested several times on the licensing exam, so I wanted to mention that. So let's uh, jump to some clinical vignettes now. 39-year-old woman, gravid of 4, para 3, comes to the physician for a prenatal visit. Her last menstrual period was 8 weeks ago. She had has had no abdominal pain or vaginal bleeding. She has no medical problem. The exam is unremarkable except for an 8-week size non-tender uterus. Prenatal labs are sent. The rapid plasma reagent test comes back as positive, and a confirmatory microhemagglutination assay for antibodies to tryponema pallidum, MHA-TP, also comes back as positive. Which of the following is most appropriate pharmacotherapy? Well, you saw these big long tests being written out, so that's good. And no doubt, if they're both positive, this woman has indeed syphilis. And the treatment of choice for stiff syphilis is always an IM shot of penicillin G. So that would be choice D. Next one. Patient is referred to a neurologist because of ataxia. The neurologist diagnoses degeneration of the dorsal columns and dorsal roots of the spinal cord, which has caused impaired proprioception and locomotor ataxia. Which of the following organisms most likely cause this pattern of damage? Well, what this patient essentially has developed is something known as tabes dorsalis. And the tabes dorsalis is part of tertiary syphilis um, that can occur years um, later if someone is not treated for syphilis during the primary phase or secondary phase. And Essentially what they're asking for in this question is what organism, and the organism, as we know, that causes syphilis is tryponema pallidum. So that's what that is. And finally, a 25-year-old male develops a painless ulcer on the glands of his penis. After an appropriate exam, you diagnose primary syphilis and treat him with 2.4 million units of benzathine penicillin intramuscularly in a single dose. Eight hours later, while you are working at the evening clinic, he returns because he has a fever of 100.6, bad headache, which he rarely gets, and he says he aches all over. Which of the following would be most appropriate at this time? Well, it looks like he's got some myalgia or malaise. He's definitely got fever. He's got a headache. He had syphilis and was given penicillin. So this is that famous Herxheimer reaction. And... The good news is that it usually goes away in about 24 hours, uh, so you just reassure the patient, and if you need to, you can just give something for the fever, like a salicylate. So the answer would be E, reassurance and antipyretics.